us. We're just happy to be here. <laughs> he was very happy to get the game because as you look at his schedule, they've played three games up at the top there. They've got the Tar Heels today. But this is the rest of his schedule. Canceled, 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 postponed. And in his preseason, before their first game at Iowa, they were only able to practice twice in the 47 days before they played that game. And to this day, they still have not practiced entirely as a team. It's crazy, but it's college basketball. And we'll have starting lineups in tip-off between the Eagles and the 16th ranked Tar Heels when we come back. Center here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by your local Toyota dealer for Lavelle Motons, North Carolina Central Eagles, Jordan Perkins, Jameer Moultrie, CJ Kaiser, Nicholas Spinell, and Naomi Cabea. A small lineup against this. Leaky Black, Caleb Love, RJ Davis, Garrison Brooks, Armando Baycott, Roy Williams. He has as much size on his roster right now that I can remember in a long time. Well, they've got four guys who can play the four or five position. They're very big inside, but all four of those guys don't play at the same time. <laughs> and I think the key to North Carolina is going to be their freshman guards. One of the few times in North Carolina history they've started freshman guards, but that starts pretty well. An early turnover. Balls into the hands of Baycott, who gets fouled on his way up. Now, you know, you're talking about North Carolina's size, but one thing that you have to remember about it is you look at Baycott there as he goes to the free throw. They're not lumbering kind of guys. They can get up and down. And Baycott just ran the floor right there, and that gets him to the free throw line. The foul was called against C.J. Kaiser, his first, team's first. Makes the first. Let's take a look at today's keys to the game, brought to you by your local Ford dealer. What do you have for us? Well, I think what North Carolina Central has to do is they've got to be able to force some turnovers, and they've got to, and to do that, you've got to be tough, and you've got to get out and play a little bit in transition. And for North Carolina, they've really had problems with turnovers. The first thing is they have to throw it to the ball in the white shirts. That's the first <laughs> thing before they do anything else. Keep it simple, right? Simple as possible, particularly in this day and age. Tar Heels start in the man-to-man. -man. And that's the second turnover here for North Carolina Central. And Justin, North Carolina just doesn't have the size advantage on the inside. They have a size advantage at every position. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we talk about the North Carolina Central Eagles having to be tough. They've got to be able to drive the ball to the basket. They've got to be able to take contact. It looked like Garrison Brooks slipped. Turnover here for the Tar Heels. Kaiser fading away at the free throw line. And it will be Tar Heel basketball. Now, Kaiser is an excellent scorer. Transfer from Wichita State. He can shoot from the perimeter. He can drive the ball to the basket. But he's going up against Leaky Black, who's got him by about five inches. That's hard to shoot the ball over that man. Good ball moving here by the Tar Heels. Looking down low for Brooks. Baycott jumps up. Gets fouled. So he'll go back to the free throw line as Niemi Cabea picks up the foul. And that's sort of a perfect sequence for the Tar Heels. You get that high-low game going. You throw the ball into Brooks, and that draws some attention. And nice job by Baycott to find the open spot and then drive to the basket. Misses this one. He made his first two free throws. And free throw shooting has been an issue so far for North Carolina, shooting under 65% on the year. They lost that Texas game where they missed eight free throws in the first half, including three ends, front ends of the one and one. So 50% on the first four free throws here for Baycott, a 2 nothing North Carolina lead. Into the game for the first time is Justin Watney. Here's Kaiser, gets the roll. You mentioned his scoring prowess, over 22 points per game so far this year. Granted, it is only three games for North Carolina Central. Coming off a loss against Coastal Carolina Monday, 78-71. Nikki Black, top of the key, Caleb Love. Davis will take the three off the back of the rim, kept alive nicely by Baker. In a double team, Garrison Brooks able to draw another foul. And he just had the feeling this was going to be the approach for North Carolina. Get the ball inside, 
and it's going to be a battle of attrition. Can you keep the guys on, on the floor? Well, it certainly helps North Carolina Central to have, you mentioned Christian Watley in the game. This is the first appearance he's made this year. You know, you talk about the whole team not being together for practice, not being available. And Watley is six feet eight, and so that really helps him inside. But keep in mind, Justin, that just because you have guys inside and you want to throw them the ball, it's not that easy when you have veteran big guys and inexperienced guards. Sometimes feeding the post can be a difficult task. Three of six at the line are the Tar Heels to open up this game. Here's Watley. Another turnover here for the Eagles. Black kick out. Baycott in traffic turns it over, and it's a sloppy start for both teams. In the corner, Moultrie for three. Doesn't get it to go, and the rebound. Here comes Leaky Black. And another reach-in foul. That's Watley again. <laughs> Just as we said, this is his first appearance. It's going to be a short one. <laughs> Watley's second. Justin Watley. Redshirt junior of Chesapeake, Virginia. Leaky Black at the free throw line. I love it how he got his nickname. His middle name is Malik. His grandmother started calling him Leaky, and it stuck. Well, certainly when your grandmother's doing things, that's, you have to pay attention to that. One of two at the line again, and we have another whistle. And that falls on Armando Baycock. Yep. So that's his first and the team's first, but the free throws, four for eight for North Carolina to open up this game. You know, that, that's great. You get to the free throw line. That's what you're trying to do by like punching the ball inside. But when you get it in there, if you're going to miss a couple of free throws, then it's just like a turnover, right? Moultrie to Kaiser in the corner. Picked up by Black. And again, the Kaiser 6 feet 3 Leaky Black is 6 feet 8 with long arms. He's the best North Carolina defender. This is a very, very difficult matchup for Kaiser. Foul on the floor against Leaky Black. Shot clock sets to 20. Leaky Black, 6 8. And not just 6 8, but those long arms, too, against Kaiser. Well, you mentioned the shot clock resetting to 20 on a dead ball when you retain possession in the front court. They've tweaked the rules a little bit. It's not going back to 30 seconds anymore on a dead ball where you gain possession in your front court. The clock is going to reset to 20 or whatever. You know, if it's more than 20, it'll reset to 25 or whatever. Vanell able to get his own miss, put it back in. Ties this game at four. Offensive rebound? Uh-uh. Garrison Brooks cannot grab it. Here comes Kaiser up ahead, and Fennell turns it over. Let me ask you this. Obviously, North Carolina Central, they haven't had a chance to practice as an entire team yet, so it's going to be sloppy in that regard. How much of, of what you're seeing turnover-wise is it lack of practices for both teams or not having fans to play in front of? You know, I'm not sure that not having the fans leads to more turnovers, Justin. <laughs> I just think it's early in the season and guys are trying to get used to how they want to play. And again, for North Carolina Central, they've got to be very careful with their pace. They need to get out and get easy shots on offense, but they do not want to create a totally transition game because that's where North Carolina excels. Baycott had the field goal. He's got four of the six for Carolina. Watley for three, able to hit it. And Watley gives North Carolina Central the lead over the Tar Heels with 15.41 to go here in this first half. And you know North Carolina's tired of seeing guys make threes. Iowa made 17 of them. Leaky Black for three. It's an air ball. And that will lead us to a timeout. Justin Watley picked up two quick fouls in his first action. Was left open for three. And Watley was able to hit it to give North Carolina Central a one-point lead here in the first half. You can't. Advil says you can. Back 
here inside the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The Eagles of North Carolina Central lead by one right now over the Tar Heels. A sloppy start, four turnovers in the early going for North Carolina Central. Tar Heels two, but look at this, one for four from the floor, four for eight. That's 50%. My math is pretty good on that. <laughs> well, but the problem there is if you're not scoring from the free throw line, and that's what you're getting, they're mm -hmm. not getting field goal attempts because they're being fouled. And so if you get to the foul line, you need to make your free throws or you're putting yourself in a bond. Nice pass. Kaiser, the beneficiary of that assist by Jordan Perkins. Perkins, second most assists in the history of North Carolina Central. And this is what North Carolina Central wants to do, and that is set the, the half-court defense. And they, they're going to try to pack it inside and force North Carolina to shoot threes, but when you got a guy like Leaky Black who can get in the middle so effectively, that's hard to do. Baycott's got six of the eight for Carolina. Trying to trap. Watley, kick out, Moultrie for three. And that's the problem with the trap, Justin. If you handle the trap, if your opponent handles your trap, they're going to get an open shot. And already they've made two threes. Uh, Moultrie, statistically, is their best three-point shooter early in the year. Love looking down low. Harrison Brooks doesn't get the roll. Here come the Eagles. Brooks doesn't usually miss one like that. That was an excellent pass. We talked about throwing the ball inside to the post. Love did a great job that time. Brooks just didn't convert. Watley picked up those two quick fouls, has stayed on the floor. Shot clock down to eight. Pinnell goes baseline, shot clock at four, turnover. There's those long arms of Leakey Black. Up ahead to Love. Love with the Euro step, but it's going to be an offensive foul. Able to step in and draw that is C.J. Kaiser. Well, he Euro stepped right into the defender. And that was really a nice play by Kaiser. He gets back, sets his feet, and then he's way outside that restricted area. Substitutions here for the Tar Heels. Andrew Playtech, Daron Sharp, and Kerwin Walton. I'll check in for Roy Williams. Well, Playtech is a guy, I think, who's going to be important to North Carolina, and he's been pretty good so far. He's got double-figure scoring in two of their first five games, and those two, that's his, that equals his total double-figure scoring in his career. Mike Melvin has checked in for the first time for the Eagles. Kaiser. His step back jumper is good. And that's what Kaiser likes to do. If Kaiser's out there dribbling the ball, just trying to set you up, I think you have to come and double team him or something because he is really good. He can get by you, step back, and that's a very nice jump shot. The Eagles open the game one of four. They're five of their last five. A 10 2 run for North Carolina Central. That long jumper off the back of the rim by Sharp. And now a foul is going to be called against Andrew Playton. A good block out that time by the Eagles. 14 fouls apiece. Lavelle and, Moulton. And Roy Williams, he's got to be a little bit frustrated. This is his team's sixth game. I know he's got a lot of young players, but one of the things that they've done almost in every game, at least consistently, they've fallen behind. Yeah, first yeah. half has been really problematic. Yeah, you'd like to get off to a good start. Jameer Moultrie is getting off to a good start from downtown here for the Eagles. He's got two threes, and it's a nine-point lead, 13-2 run for North Carolina Central. Davis, a shooter. Here's Walker Kessler, one of those McDonald's All-Americans, and we've got the third foul called now against Justin Watley trying to box out. Well, Kessler is a guy who comes in with the reputation as somebody who can shoot that three, but I'm not sure at this particular point of this game that that's really what you're looking for. The Tar Heels have a tremendous advantage on the inside. They need to put the ball on their two big guys. Jonathan Maxwell has checked in now. Number 23 for North Carolina Central. R.J. Davis, he'll set up the offense. 
And Maxwell, one of the great stories early in this college basketball season, he just sort of dropped out of the sky. <laughs> Here's Kessler inside, gets called for steps. Another turnover, and that leads us to a timeout. Well, 11.57 to go in the first half. Not sure this is what everyone expected. North Carolina Central, a nine-point lead over North Carolina. I'm at the highest level as a professional athlete, but it also just allows me to be Noah. 17 to 8, North Carolina Central on top of the Tar Heels here in the first half. And let's take a look at today's Star to Watch brought to you by Hardy's. And it is the leading scorer for the Eagles, CJ Kaiser. And this is a guy, he comes in averaging 22 points a game, but he's one of those guys who's capable of going off for 30 every night. And this is just a situation. He moves well without the ball. When he catches it, he's looking to score in transition. He's just in the right place at the right time. But he's really good at this, setting up his guy off the dribble, pulling up and shooting that little jump shot. He's also a capable three-point shooter. He's made three or four field goals, as we showed you. North Carolina showing full court pressure here. And R.J. Davis able to knock it away. Well, the Tar Heels trying to change the tempo of this game. North Carolina Central has sort of settled into a comfortable rhythm here about halfway through this first half. And if you're North Carolina, you got to disrupt that somehow. Can't move along the baseline, able to get it in. And now Mike Melvin will, will bring the ball up. The bench for North Carolina Central is yelling, get it across! And that's one of those things where if there's fans in the stand and they're making a lot of noise, maybe there's, they don't hear them. Nice move by Mike Melvin. Hanging in the air, and guess what? It's a 15-2 scoring run over three minutes without a, a point for North Carolina as Playtech will end that as he's got it and the foul. Niemi Cabea called for the foul. Nice finish here by Playtech. Well, this is just a situation where you cannot allow your man to beat you. And that's hard for Sharp, trying to get out there and guard a little guy. But if you give up that drive, particularly if he's going around you on the baseline, that creates all sorts of problems for a defense. And North Carolina has not been necessarily sharp on that end of the court. And Playtech converts the three-point play. Puck Johnson will come in, replacing Playtech. Now, Johnson's a guy who comes in with the reputation as being a tremendous shooter. Hadn't played a lot of minutes so far early in the season, but this is an opportunity for him to earn his some time. So it runs in the family, you're saying? His well, brother Cam Johnson? You look at you look at his face, he's the spitting image of his brother. <laughs> a little different hairstyle, but that face, you can identify them as brothers anywhere. Kaiser, the pull-up jumper again, misses, and that's the first miss in a long time. They have made the last seven straight field goal attempts again trying to go high low sharp back to Kessler and he gets fouled and he's got a chance for a three-point play that was great work by those two freshman big guys Kessler I thought he was going to be a little late with the pass but it was a good pass it was a high pass which was the only reason it wasn't intercepted and then he doesn't stand outside and watch Kessler cuts to the basket and as a result he's got a chance for a three-point play that is excellent execution by North Carolina. Great bloodlines for Walker Kessler. His dad played at Georgia. His brother played at Georgia. His uncle, the late Alec Kessler. It runs in the family. Three-point play makes it a five-point North Carolina central lead with 10.45 to go here in the first half. And if you're North Carolina, you've got to dig in on the defensive end. This is where it's all going to start. Melvin, shot clock down to eight. Hanging off the glass and the finish by Maxwell. You started talking about what a story he is. Essentially falling out of the sky into the hands of North Carolina Central. He just played his first game against Coastal Carolina this week. Well, he's going to drive the ball to the basket here, and again, he's getting through the crowd. You have to keep your man in front of you, and North Carolina hasn't done that. But 
Maxwell's a guy who showed up. He had to get cleared by the NCAA. Uh, so he didn't do any workouts. Of course, nobody did any right. workouts. And then when he got cleared, he didn't he didn't get cleared in time to make the team bus to Coastal Carolina. So he took his own car and drove to Coastal <laughs> Carolina. And he showed up and told the coach, Lavelle Moten, he was here. And he actually played in that game. <laughs> Made a couple of threes, had a good game, and Lavelle told us the other day that he was sitting around at a timeout. He said, okay, do you know this play? Do you know this play? It's truly remarkable what's going on. In a sense, it's it's almost refreshing because you're just playing basketball, not game planning too much, just going out and hooping. How did Lavelle describe it? Just drawing plays in the dirt? <laughs> yeah. Turnover. Here comes Melvin. Melvin. As it blocked, it goes off of him. What a defensive play by Caleb Love. And that's one of those where I think Melvin was too worried about the defender as opposed to going up with it. Well, again, very undisciplined with the basketball, getting the turnover, but Love does a great job not committing a foul. And that ball bounces off the head of Melvin. Leaky Black back in. Curran Walton goes to the bench for North Carolina. So if you're playing out on the perimeter, you've got to get yourself in position to pass the ball inside. And I think that time, they, Black was a little bit too close to the free throw line. Get down toward the baseline a little bit more before you pass that ball inside. Garrison Brooks back in. When the turnover problems we talked about, I mean, they haven't gone away. North Carolina with 81 turnovers in five games coming in. Seven turnovers already in this one. Seven turnovers, four field goals. Not the ratio you want to have. That's the first time in 10 years that North Carolina's had that many turnovers in their first five games. Kaiser to the hoop. Kaiser's got eight. I'm telling you, he can score. You can see how North Carolina Central's just packing it in the paint, almost daring the Tar Heels to shoot from outside. And here is a shot from outside. No good by Johnson. The rebound and putback is good by Leaky Black. If you move the ball effectively, and North Carolina did that time, side to side, in and out, if you move the ball effectively, even if you miss the shot, your big guys are going to be in pretty good rebounding position. So North Carolina, they just need to move the ball and get their shot, take good shots. But if they do that, they've got big guys inside who can get rebounds. This is out of bounds. We'll stay. North Carolina Central basketball with 10 on the shot clock. You almost get the sense that North Carolina's best offense is the putback, the offensive rebound. North Carolina traditionally does a great job scoring second chance points. And I think they have an opportunity to do that again here today. But they just have to make sure they're moving themselves and moving the ball. Devin Palmer checks in, sends it beyond midcourt. Shot clock running down. It's at four. Ty Graves, three, just grazes the rim. Out of bounds, leads us to a break in the action. Eight minutes to go in this first half. North Carolina Central. They said, who, we're playing North Carolina? All right, fine. Well, liberty, liberty, liberty. ACC basketball is presented by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. The Fresh Market. Discover the best today. And by Continental Tire for what you do. Eight minutes to go back on the campus of UNC Chapel Hill and number 16th ranked North Carolina. Losing to North Carolina Central right now and you see this. They've trailed by double digits in four of their first six games. They've trailed by double digits today. Again, they're getting off to a very poor start in these games and you know then it, that makes it tough to come back Caleb Love being pounded by Graves Love got bumped and that foul will be against Graves but Love needs to be a little bit careful because he's out there dribbling the ball and he's giving that little head bob trying to force the referee to blow the whistle and if he's too much more obvious with that he's going to get warned for a flopping violation the head bob that was made yep. famous by Kemba Walker. Yep, and that's the, you know, the last year they put in that flopping rule where you get warned 
And then if anybody else has a flop, then it's a technical foul. But that's specifically the head bob was one of the things they were trying to eliminate. That's what they talked about. So you got to be careful with that. Again, one of two at the line. A six-point lead for North Carolina Central. And we just showed you it was 11 a couple of minutes ago. So Tar Heels, they've dug in a little bit on the defensive end. Perkins in the paint, just throwing one up last minute. Didn't have a good look. Here comes Leaky Black for the Tar Heels. Nice bounce pass to the corner. A lot of contact, no whistle. And the rebound comes out to Graves. Already 18 fouls for North Carolina Central. So free throws the rest of the way for the Tar Heels in his first half. But the way they're shooting free throws, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Perkins kick to the corner. And that three is good by Kobe Aite. Uh, that's his second one on the season. He's now two for four from out there. And he had all day to line that one up. The Eagles four for six from downtown. The Tar Heels 0 for four. And another whistle on the offensive rebound. And so more free throws coming up for the Tar Heels. Uh, one of the problems that the North Carolina defense has had so far is they've allowed a little bit too much dribble penetration, and Baycott just playing way off Aite. As Baycott makes the first, it was Aite who gets called for the foul. One of two again at the line, seven points for Baycott. Uh, you know, Justin, after a while, that free throw business gets in your head. Mm -hmm. You just got to go to the line and shoot with some confidence. Perkins taking time off the clock. And now a foul is going to be called here, I believe, against Garrison Brooks. They called that foul on Brooks because he set that screen really wide. And when you set the screen really wide, and the defender bounces off one of your legs, and that's exactly what happened here. That's an automatic for the officials. They try to jump the ball handler, create some havoc, shot clock down to eight. Perkins gets fouled again, and this is again gonna be against Garrison Brooks. And, one, and this is one of the things where Brooks every once in a while has struggled. You know, if you get your big guy and he's getting fouls inside, that's one thing. But he's now picked up two fouls 25 feet away from the basket, and that is not what you want. Roy Williams this year, though, he's got some depth in there, mm -hmm. so he's not happy. But at least he has another big guy he can put in the game. That big guy is Dayron Sharp, the McDonald's All-American, one of those four McDonald's All-Americans in his freshman class. Perkins, the lefty, doesn't hit, and it's Sharp with the rebound. His last few possessions by North Carolina Central, Perkins has really dominated the ball. Offensive rebounds again and again. Armando Baycott able to draw contact, and he'll go to the free throw line. Baycott is just doing a great job getting to the basket on these missed shot opportunities. He bounces off Maxwell right there, doing a really nice job finding the basketball as it comes off the rim. Aite called for the foul. That's his second team's 10, so two free throws here for Baycott. Baycott now four of seven at the line, eight points. The Tar Heels are nine of 15 at the line. North Carolina Central is 0 for 0. And Baycott makes them both. Six point lead. Leaky Black picking up full court here against Kaiser. And again, North Carolina Central, they don't mind running the clock down a little bit. But North Carolina has done a nice job here recently playing very good defense at the end of the clock. Not that Great time. Back to a cut by Kaiser and the find by Perkins. 
Eight-point lead. Baycott underneath gets fouled again. He'll go back to the free-throw line for his ninth and tenth attempts of the half. North Carolina is trying to put on some pressure, and Leaky Black just loses track of Kaiser. When I first saw that play, I thought Black was trying to deny the ball out there, but that was not the case. He just lost track of him, and that's at the end of the shot clock. That's when you have to tighten up your defense, not give away an easy one. Kaiser gets called for the foul, his second as Baycott's now made three in a row. Andrew Playtech will come back in for Leakey Black. Jonathan Maxwell's back in for North Carolina Central. And Baycott, he's been to the line so many times now, he's starting to find a rhythm as he's made four in a row. The Tar Heels are starting to make the Eagles pay for the fouls. You get to the free throw line, you convert them. Perkins hanging just threw one up because he couldn't find a teammate transition opportunity here for North Carolina ball is tipped taken away here comes Perkins back the other way and this will be out of bounds off of Caleb Love as Devin Palmer is unable to corral it another tough turnover for the Tar Heels but again they get back very effectively on defense Both teams will be shooting free throws for, for the remainder of this first half. But again, you can see how North Carolina Central is okay taking time off the clock. Well, that's fine as long as you can execute at the end of the shot clock, and for the most part, they've been able to do it. Kaiser, pull up for three. That's short, and the rebound for Sharp. Love. And now a timeout will be taken here by Lavelle Moten. Caleb Love, part of that freshman class, able to finally get a field goal. From citrusy salad to ham topped with maple, do the holidays right with Ralph's on your table. Congratulations to Evan and Kaylee Lepler on the birth of their baby girl, Caden Elizabeth Lepler, born on Thursday. That is awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, we had this... The, the game originally scheduled for this date was Virginia and William and & Mary, and then it became Florida Atlantic and NC State. But when they were both canceled, then these guys, as you mentioned earlier, they put this game together, and Evan was supposed to do the game, but life intervened. Yep, and that's, that's a good way for life to intervene. Absolutely. Out of the timeout, we're going to have an offensive foul. And that's a foul they can't afford. Against Jameer Moultrie. Well, Moultrie, you just, their pace has just changed. Mm -hmm. you know? There's too much dribbling of the basketball unless you're going somewhere. If you're going to drive it in and kick it out, that's one thing. And now they've gone, they've dropped into a 2-3 zone because those fouls are piling up. Sharp, kick out. See, and even against the zone, when you throw the ball inside, you can't stand and watch. Go find an open spot out on the perimeter. Play tech inside and it's stripped away here comes kaiser that was tough pass. kaiser all the way to the hoop and that shot was altered by sharp it's going to be out of bounds and it was out of bounds off of carolina so it will stay eagles basketball taking the ball to the basket and this is a nice job by sharp to get back and i think he got it before it was above the cylinder too The officials, Ramey Steins, Jr. Heater, and Anthony Franklin. Right, the ball goes up here. And he hits the rim, but that, that, that doesn't make any difference. You know, the ball wasn't on the rim. Right. The ball wasn't on the cylinder. He had blocked the ball. It was outside of the cylinder. 3.13 to go here in the first half. Justin Kutcher alongside Dan Bonner. And the officials are not reviewing anything here. I think there's a there's an issue with the basket with the, with the basket, the stanchion, and the clock. Yeah, they banged in. The shot in. clock was off, <laughs> yep. 
they banked it to the basket pretty good. <laughs> and so they did that. There, 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 we got to plug it back in. That's all we need? Just well, plug it back in? Isn't that the solution usually? Just take it and plug it in? But uh, Usually I bang the basket stanchion first or the remote control. It doesn't yeah. work. And then I, I do something else. That's why most of my things at home are broken. It will be North Carolina Central ball. And again, this is one of those situations. The ball didn't hit the rim. It's a dead ball. You're getting possession of the ball in your front court. And so the shot clock is not going to reset to 30 anymore. It's going to reset to 20 or more if you've got more than 20. It resets to 20 or whatever's left on the shot clock if it's more than 20. The officials making sure they have it right. Perkins will inbound with Kessler all over him. And again, they go to the backcourt to inbound this one. Moultrie has it poked away. Good hands. R.J. Davis, he'll pull up and he gets it blocked. Vanell was able to block it out of bounds off the Eagles. Tar Heel basketball with 25 on the shot clock. This is a risky play for a big guy, but Dayron Sharp is able to stick his hand in there and knock the ball away. And North Carolina really has struggled in transition so far today. A typical Carolina team is one that gets up and down the court and makes you pay for it when you turn it over. Play set for three, front rims it, rebound for Fennell. Four point, Eagles lead. About two and a half to go here in this first half. And the Tar Heels have cut down on the turnovers as the half has proceeded, and that has made North Carolina Central play against the set half-court man-to-man defense, and they've struggled a little bit. Fennell in the paint, has it blocked by Kessler. Loose ball, we're gonna have a jump ball, possession arrow, North Carolina. This is a situation, you know, Fennell is a guy who can normally score inside, but he's going in there, and Kessler got the block, but Sharp was there, too. You're just not going to have much success. You drive in there, you draw the big guys, you have to find somebody to whom to pass the ball. Kessler gets the block, and now he'll go take a seat on the bench as Baycott comes back in. And here, the Eagles go back into the zone. Davis. Playtech just missed a three. Here's Baycott at the free throw line. Able to knock it down and make it a two-point game. Baycott's got 11 points, excuse me, 13 points now here in this first half. 13 points, four rebounds. Well, he's really been a factor inside. And that was just a nice play, recognizing that they dropped off of him. He didn't try to force the ball inside, made that nice little jump shot. Moultrie, good crossover. Maxwell couldn't finish. A chance for the Tar Heels to take the lead with a three. Just because you have the ball inside doesn't mean you have to shoot it. Sharp doesn't get the roll. There's Baycott, the offensive rebound and put back. He has been all over the offensive glass in this first half. And here in North Carolina, after being down by 11 at one point in the first half, they've come back to tie the game, and they've done it because they've stopped turning the ball over, and they have been dominant on the inside. And what's incredible is we showed that statistic of them falling behind by double digits in the first half as Kaiser had his three deflected. Davis. His three is short, and the rebound for Perkins. But... After falling behind by 10 plus points, they've come back to take the lead now in all four of those games. <laughs> well, it's tied right now at 28. Perkins, the runner, See, too that's strong. A, that's a tough shot. When, they, when North Carolina Central has had success, They've had success drawing the defense and creating easy shots. And you're not going to make all your easy shots either, but the tough ones, you don't want them. Davis 
inside, and there is a lead for the Tar Heels with two seconds to go. And out of bounds, shot does not count. A 16-5 to Tar Heel run to close out the half and to retake the lead by two. North Carolina Central, they had the lead. They were playing well, creating turnovers. But the offensive glass proved to be too much at the end of the first half as Roy Williams can actually sigh of relief. His team is back on top by two at the end of the first. To buy your local Toyota dealer back here at the Smith Center on the campus of North Carolina Chapel Hill. The Tar Heels have come back to lead by two over North Carolina Central. Justin Kutch alongside Dan Bonner. And Dan, uh, a sloppy beginning to start the game. Impressive to see what North Carolina Central did to build a lead, but the Tar Heels able to come back. Yeah, and I think what happened was North Carolina settled into the game a little bit. They stopped turning the ball over. That prevented North Carolina Central from getting out and getting some easy baskets. And then Armando Bacot just took over the game. Armando Bacot, he had 15 points in the first half. The rest of the Tar Heels had 15 points. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. And this North Carolina Central team started off cold, and all of a sudden they couldn't miss. Well, they, they, what they did is they drove the ball to the basket through the defense, and they found open players on the outside. They made a couple of threes, including a couple of long threes. And when the ball's going in the basket, the game is always very easy. <laughs> and as you got to the second, as you got to the second part of this first half, the ball stopped going in the basket for North Carolina Central. And a lot of that had to do with the defense the Tar Heels were playing. But early on, the Eagles were doing just about anything they wanted to do. They made seven straight field goals at one point, got to that 11-point lead, but then North Carolina just slowed down a little bit, and they started dominating inside. We mentioned Armando Baycott has been the man inside. He's done a nice job against the smaller Eagles. He's worn them out on the offensive boards, and he started to make some free throws. He missed a couple early, but Baycott, including, made, that 15, made a 15-foot jumper later on in the half. So he has played a very, very nice first half, and he's one of the reasons why North Carolina has gotten the lead. Our game summary brought to you by my favorite candy, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> um, you see, how about this? North Carolina, we talked about it. Their three-point shooting is not good. They're 0 for 7 from three-point land, yet they still lead by two because of the offensive rebounds. Well, because of the offensive rebounds and because of those nine turnovers, seven of them were early in the game. And so they stopped turning the ball over and they started rebounding the ball effectively. So even with the low shooting percentage, if you're going to go get the offensive rebound, that's okay. That's where the size of this Tar Heels team comes into play. North Carolina Central has fought hard in the first half, trailing by two. We'll have more with the Toyota Halftime Report after this. All essential in every way and together, it makes a holiday. Let's end the year with what matters. Welcome back to today's Halftime Report brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Two-point Tar Heels lead at the half over North Carolina Central. Justin Kutcher alongside Dan Bonner. And again, really the story of the first half was Baycott with the 15 points, crashing the offensive glass, getting to the free throw line, and causing a lot of foul trouble for North Carolina Central. Absolutely. You know, Garrison Brooks picked up a couple of fouls, so he had to go to the bench. We talked about North Carolina's inside depth. We've seen it today. As far as what else we've seen around the ACC, Duke, we heard from Coach K, they've canceled the remaining non-conference schedule. Uh, six ACC teams ranked the top 25, and the 2021 conference tournament has been moved to Greensboro. Your take on this stuff? Well, you know, I think we're going to have a season where we're probably going to have some starts and stops, uh, and I just think everybody has to be flexible. Yeah. You know, you got to sort of roll with the punches. We already said that's what these two teams did. Uh, North Carolina had a game that was canceled, and so they went to Lavelle Moton. Roy Williams and he are friends for a long time. He said, hey, you want to play? I think that's the kind of creativity everybody's going to have to show. That's like you, preparing for this game and preparing for three <laughs> others all at the same time. North Carolina with their size getting to the hoop, leading by two here at halftime. One side effect is bone and muscle ache. If you'd rather be home, ask your doctor about Nulasta Onpro. Pay no more than $5 per dose with copay card. 
Today's halftime report brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Yeah, there's number 23. He's a leading scorer, right? Yeah, how about today's leading scorer, CJ Kaiser, in double figures for the Eagles with 10. Armando Bacon, as we talked about, 15 points. He has as many points as the rest of the Tar Heels do. He has been the only offense thus far for North Carolina. They're going to look to someone else in the second half to help out. Second half is coming up right after this here from Chapel Hill. The games that Dan Bonner was preparing for and just like the rest of college basketball being flexible, this guy starts watching game tape, knowing players and as we look at North Carolina and Armando Baycott, the sophomore who in that first half, 15 points on 4 of 4 from the floor, 7 of 10 at the free throw line, 7 rebounds, 4 of them offensive. But this North Carolina team is a second half team, Dan. This year, they have been outscored by 14 in the first half. Now 12 with this game. They've outscored their opponents by almost 10 points per game in the second. Well, let's see what kind of adjustments that North Carolina Central has tried to make. They got very sloppy with the basketball, a little bit too much dribbling, a good movement here. But a turnover on the entry pass by Perkins. And an early whistle. As that foul will be called against Jameer Moultrie. Moultrie was matched up against Garrison Brooks and fouled him. And that's the second against Moultrie. Now Brooks is six feet ten. Moultrie's five feet eleven. He shouldn't be around there. <laughs> now that's asking for trouble. Good hands. Turnover. See, and this is where North oh, Carolina Central had another turnover. Yeah, this is where they had great success in the first half is creating turnovers, getting down the court and getting easy shots. But Lavelle Moten can't be happy with that. His nickname when he played at North Carolina Central, poetry in Moten. <laughs> there was no poetry on that possession. Brooks, who had foul trouble in the first half, really quiet. He's got one point. Here's Leaky Black, top of the key, three, no. Rebound for Brooks. Now, Leaky Black does a lot of things really well, but shoot the perimeter jump shot, particularly from three, isn't among them. The Tar Heels 0 for 8 from three-point land in this game, but they do lead by two. Watley's in the game. Here's Moultrie with the left. Nice running left-hander right there by Jameer Moultrie. Attacking the hoop, Caleb Love the other way. And just because you score doesn't mean you can relax. Moultrie scored the basket and Caleb Love, Love just went right down the court. And Moultrie was chasing him the whole way. Another foul this time against Moultrie. And Moultrie, you can see him, he's behind Caleb Love and that doesn't help. And Watley goes over there to help out. Nothing much Watley can do. He's already got those three personal fouls. And now Moultrie, he's got his third foul. Love. Now he's got his fourth and foul. There it is. And Moultrie just starts walking right to the bench. That was three fouls in a matter of what? A minute? Minute 37. Well, yes. that's, but, but from the time that he had his first foul to when he had his, now, or second foul to fourth foul, I didn't even think it was less than that. Unbelievable. I played in a freshman game one time when I was in college where I had one foul at halftime and I fouled out before there was we got to the 18 minute mark. So. <laughs> Who are you guarding? Obviously nobody. <laughs> but I was fouling everyone. <laughs> Baycott again now with 17 points. And that's five offensive rebounds, and he's just wearing them out on the inside. Kaiser, jumper is short, rebound for Baycott. And Kaiser, you know, his opportunities have been limited since early in the game. He made three of his first four shots, now he's five for 11. As Baycott is feeling it now. Eight for, excuse me, six for six from the floor. Armando Baycott, he's got 19 points and a timeout taken here by North Carolina Central. Baycott 
They're daring him to shoot. And he says, dare me. I'll take it. Carolina leads by six. We are back here at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, with the Tar Heels leading by six. But the foul trouble is mounting for North Carolina Central. You can see Moultrie's got four. Cabea and Watley each have three. Uh, we were just notified of this, but in that Florida-Florida State game, Keontae Johnson collapsed on the court early in the game. He is in critical but stable condition right now. Uh, Keontae, we wish you a quick and speedy recovery, uh, but it was a scary moment on the floor. Here's Watley for three out of the timeout. Doesn't get the roll, but it's out of bounds. Off of Leaky Black will stay North Carolina Central ball. Well, that young man's a nice young man, and he is a great basketball player, and so just hope for the best there. Yeah. In a year where everyone's been rattled by what's going on with COVID and to have a player collapse on the floor at any time will rattle you. And now it just, it's almost ratcheted up another notch. Turnover on the inbounds. Lavelle well, Mopin not happy. And, and it didn't touch anybody right. inbounds, so he goes right back to the same spot. About the only person who was open out there was Roy Williams. He was wide open. Yeah, but he turned away. He didn't want any part of that. <laughs> Love, he turns it right back over. Here comes Melvin. He threw the ball to the right spot. Baycott just didn't step in. Now you can't stand there and watch the game. Baycott has had a fabulous game, but that time he needed to take a step toward the basket. Love thought he would, and he didn't. Fading away, difficult shot by C.J. Kaiser. Kaiser's one of those guys, Justin, who can make tough shots. You've got to keep him from getting in any sort of a rhythm at all. And now he creates a turnover with the strip. A reach-in foul here against Leaky Black. We said Kaiser's a guy who can score, and here he goes into a crowd and falls away with Garrison Brooks, an outstanding shot blocker, right in his face. Sometimes you look at a guy and you say, boy, that's a tough shot, but Kaiser, it's amazing how many of those tough shots he can make. I wonder with the insertion of Mike Melvin, if this North Carolina Central team doesn't take so much time off the clock. Obviously, the shot clock's down to eight. Watley in the paint with the left off the glass. Gets boxed out. Melvin's got the rebound. Here's Kaiser in the corner. And Watley. You, and you notice when they get the rebound, the offensive rebound, Watley scores the shot clock only reset to 20. Yep. Two-point game. North Carolina on top. Again, where will the offense come from for North Carolina if it's not Baycott? Love, his pull-up jumper, got it, and the foul. And that's something the North we haven't seen from North Carolina, the ability to make a jump shot. It's not just the three-point shooting. The Tar Heels have had a difficult time making a jump shot, but Love, in this particular case, is able to pick it up and beat the defense. Very few times we've seen jump shots. Game. So these teams really have lost like six games that they would normally use to tune things up. You have to play at least 13, but, uh, you know, maybe you don't have to play that many. I can't imagine that uh, there's some team out there, Gonzaga, for example, who's 12-0, that they wouldn't let him go. But uh, so it's just it's going to be an odd season. Uh, it's been strange already. It's going to continue to be so, and everybody's just got to... You know, not sweat the small stuff, just go play. I think what you're going to see is if more and more games get canceled, like college football is doing, you're going to have to adapt. The Big Ten has made some adjustments with Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. It's just everyone, as you keep on saying, you have to be flexible. It's not just a, a, a rule that's set in stone. You may have to reevaluate. Well, adapt, improvise, overcome. Are you trademarking that? No. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Rebound by Leaky Black. Five-point Carolina lead. Kick to the corner. And we're going to have a reach-in foul here against Fennell. 
Well, North Carolina did a nice job getting the ball up the court quickly at that time. They didn't get a fast break, but they went into their offense very quickly before North Carolina Central could really get set. Brooks, face the double team, finds Sharp. Sharp, his shot from up close, comes up short. Here comes Melvin. That was really good defense by Watley, just hanging in there, holding his ground. Fennell, difficult shot with the left, doesn't get the roll. Just because you're under the basket doesn't mean it's an easy shot. Caleb Love, that was an easy shot. See, now that's what he can do. And I mean, I, I mean, he's going to be a pretty good shooter, I think, over time. But right now, he's very good at getting the ball to the basket. And in transition, it's easier for him to do. So if you're North Carolina Central, you take a tough shot down on the other end, it results in a transition opportunity for North Carolina. Now a seven-point Tar Heel lead. Melvin all the way to the hoop. Pretty move there by Mike Melvin, a senior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. I don't know how you got that to go in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks and Sharp were both there. Here's Brooks. Nice pass. Logan with Sharp for the easy dunk. We really haven't heard much from Garrison Brooks in this game, but that's at least an assist for him right there, the high-low game. But coming into the game in five games, Brooks only had five assists, so he only gets about one assist a game. He's not noted for his ability as a passer. Kaiser's noted for his ability as a scorer, and he's got 14 now. He just drove Leaky Black away with that dribble, and Black, again, he's got long arms and a five-inch height advantage, but he couldn't get close enough. The alley-oop to Sharp. Nice feed by Caleb Love. And Wadley is the guy who's guarding him, and there's very little Wadley can do if Sharp's going to get the ball that close to the basket because Wadley's one of those guys in foul trouble. Kaiser against Black. Splits the double team, fading away. Offensive rebound and put back by Nicholas Fennell. Caleb Love quickly the other way. And we're going to have an offensive foul called against Love. Well, North Carolina has had some success getting the ball down the court quickly and getting it inside. This is just a great job by Sharp to get position. Very little that anybody can do when Sharp gets the ball that close to the basket. And again, here's Sharp just going back door. Now, door. now Wadley, who is in foul trouble, he's got three fouls, stepped in and took the charge that time. So... Even though, as we're watching this game, you feel like North Carolina is securing control. It's only a four-point game. I was just thinking the same thing, that this North Carolina Central team, despite being undermanned, despite having so few practices, they're hanging in there. As Fennell, I think, may have thought he got fouled, so he put the shot up. Doesn't go. Obviously, it's a five-point game. <laughs> Playtech. Carolina looking for its first three. Still nothing there, but there's Garrison Brooks thanks to the clear out by Dayron Sharp. And again, they're just wearing them out on the offensive boards. This is where North Carolina asserted control in the first half. And right about this point in the first half, actually. 47-40, North Carolina leading. Fennell driving to the hoop, and a late whistle, but Fennell will have two free throws when we come back as Dayron Sharp gets called for the foul. The preseason ACC Player of the Year, Garrison Brooks, gets the offensive rebounds in the easy two. Your local Ford dealer, and by Husqvarna, all lawns start with the automower. The Carolina Coffee Shop, I tell you what, walking down Franklin Street last night and earlier today, what a beautiful, beautiful place this is, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Garrison Brooks, three points, three rebounds. Uh, but he's been limited with foul trouble. He picked up a couple of fouls early. How about this? At the free throw line is Nicholas Fennell. These are the first free throws of the game for North Carolina Central as he makes the first. This is what's weird about this game. That was the first free throw attempt for the Eagles. 
and North Carolina is 0 for 10 from three-point land. And we've got ourselves a five-point game. <laughs> it's just weird. Well, for the most part, when North Carolina Central has driven the ball to the basket, they're looking to drive and kick out. You don't draw fouls that way. North Carolina has been attacking inside like this. The lob again to De'Ron Sharp. Boy, the Eagles in a zone love recognizing it right away. That was an outstanding pass. You know, to throw the alley-oop across the court that distance is not an easy thing to do. Kaiser. Shot clock down to eight. Here's Kaiser against Love. Got bumped. And no shot. Foul on the floor against Love. North Carolina hadn't made any threes, but they're wearing them out on the inside. And this is just a great play right here. That is a perfect pass. He's almost out at half court when he throws it, but it's just perfect. And boy, wouldn't it be fun to be a guard and have a guy like Dayron Sharp and you can throw the ball up and he just go get it. Yes, yes it would. And wouldn't it be fun to have the preseason ACC Player of the Year, Garrison Brooks, not have a great game, so instead you give him a breather and you bring in Baycott once again. Well, Baycott has 19 points and nine rebounds. And he has just done everything he can ask him to do on the inside. Jonathan Maxwell. Shot clock down to five. Tipped out. Has to put it up with one on the shot clock. And that will be a shot clock violation. That's a really nice job defensively by North Carolina. You know, what happens when that shot clock starts running down, North Carolina Central is looking to get the ball to Kaiser. Here's that zone defense again. This looks like a little 3 2. Baycott kicks it out. Throwing Walton. Skip pass. Nice for Playtech. Looking for the first three. There it is. One for 11 from downtown on the Tar Heels. And that gives them a 10 point lead. And you know, Playtech, that's the way you want to use him if you're North Carolina. Move the ball around, get him an in rhythm, wide open three. You know, if Playtech's got to dribble it and step back behind the line, he's not going to be very accurate. But when you can move the ball effectively and find him at the end of the movement, that's really where he's going to shine. Sharp gets triple teamed, able to split it to Baycott. No. And the rebound, here comes Kaiser. Kaiser telegraphed that pass. Good hands by Playtech. Here come the Tar Heels. Playtech for three again. Back-to-back -back threes for Andrew Playtech. Well, and this is the largest lead of the game. Now that was after a transition situation. Playtech is able to go get himself set up. He's in rhythm, and they find him. That's if you, if you have to make Playtech play dribble that ball out there. Again, good hands as Love has it to Playtech, and this is even easier. The you know, last eight points for North Carolina scored by Playtech. And a timeout taken here by Lavelle Moton. And one of the big keys, I think Roy Williams switched Caleb Love over to guard C.J. Kaiser. And Love has done an outstanding job limiting Kaiser's opportunities. But Playtech, of course, they're moving the ball very well against the zone. Zone rotates over to one side. Playtech is wide open. And then this is in transition. The defense is still getting organized. Playtech has time. And then Love creates the steal. We talked, look at this hustle. He just out hustles Kaiser for the ball, makes a great pass from flat on his back, and Playtech hustling down the court. And suddenly, this game that was going along with a five, four, six point game, now North Carolina has exploded and they're up 15. Up 15 with 9.04 to go. You mentioned the play of Caleb Love, what he's done. Playtech, who has the last eight points for Carolina, came into this game five for 13 from three point land. And Playtech in this game now two of three. He's one of their best three point shooters. Well, again, there was a very interesting item in the North Carolina notes for this game, and that is that in his career leading up to this season, Andrew Playtech has scored in double figures two times. 
So in this season, this season, this is game number six of the season, and Playtech has now scored in double figures three times already this year. But again, I think he is a guy who can really help North Carolina if they can find him in the correct spots and if he can play that way with some confidence. Carolina in this second half, 12 of 18 from the floor. The game is easier when the ball goes in the basket. <laughs> Maxwell stepping back, has it blocked by Armando Baycott. What hasn't Baycott done today? I was thinking the exact same thing. Here's R.J. Davis for three. Melvin trying to push the tempo. Cross-court pass, and a three is knocked down by Devin Palmer, and the Eagles needed that in a big way. Boy, they sure did, but now they've got to tighten it up on the defensive end. Sharp goes right around his man. Is that tightening it up? No. Okay. No. But that, that'll tell you something about Dayron Sharp. <laughs> the big guy out there just puts it down and blows right by his man. 6'10", 265 is Sharp. <laughs> Maxwell's three. In and out, and the rebound for Sharp. And Roy Williams in this situation really wants his guys to push. Not to be in a big hurry, but to get down the court quickly. Sharp again, double teamed. Left wide open as Davis for three. He's known as a shooter. And now we're going to have a foul going for the rebound. And that will go against Baycott. Well, Davis has missed a couple of shots, but I think Roy Williams is really fired up here about his team's defense. Now, this is early in the game. He's still mad. Oh, no, what's going on now? But now he's happy. <laughs> and you can understand why. LX for just $159 a month plus tax. And people buy Civics more than any other car in America. Happy Honda Days by CPI and protecting the paint in this particular occasion is Caleb Love. He has struggled with turnovers today, six of them, but after this particular turnover, he gets back and makes a tremendous defensive play. The Tar Heels of North Carolina with five blocked shots on the game. That may be the most impressive one right there. And Caleb Love, we mentioned, he has struggled, uh, he has struggled a little bit today with six turnovers, but he's got ten points. Got a couple of steals as well. Nice runner off the glass by Moultrie, who's back in the game with those four fouls and seven minutes to go. Sharp spins towards the baseline. And the rebound is pulled down by Cabello. Now, Cabello's got a much bigger body than Waitley. This will stay Eagles ball as Garrison Brooks checks back in, replacing Dayron Sharp, who played very well. Eight points, four rebounds in 19 minutes. And Leaky Black also back in the game as Curran Walton goes to the bench. Well, Cabello is just he's much bigger and stronger than Watley is on the inside. Moultrie has it stripped on the way up, but there's Cabea. Has it knocked out of bounds? Three seconds on the shot clock here for the Eagles. Now, Cabea is also, he's a big, strong guy, but he is not an offensive force for the Eagles. Moultrie is a jump shooter. This is probably where they're going to try to go. Melvin to inbounds, deflected out of bounds. One second comes off the clock. Palmer nearly was open. You can see the confusion by North Carolina Central. And again, the lack of practice time. Out of bounds again, this time off the hands of Baycott. And now they're going to take one second off the clock. And nope, they're going to they're going to correct it. Jerry Heater was like, well, I guess they're going to put one second. No, two seconds on the shot clock. It's 
2020. Well, I think, I think, you know, easy to get confused, but just because the ball was touched doesn't necessarily mean that one second has to come off. Right. Moultrie's three at the buzzer is long. Back rims it. Leaky Black. Play check. Missed the baseline jumper. Melvin the rebound, trying to push. Here's Palmer for three. Hit one before, can't hit this. Leaky Black, another rebound. This is one thing that Black does really well. He gets the rebound, and then he can push it up the court quickly on the dribble. Trying for the high-low pass. That one hit the rim by Brooks. It's almost like Brooks couldn't decide whether he was going to pass it or shoot it, so he went in between. He just seems off in this game today. With the early foul trouble, he, he's never found a rhythm. Uh, and that's, you're absolutely right about that. And sometimes when you get those early fouls, it's hard to find a rhythm. Davis gets bumped. And if that's against Moultrie, that's going to be his fifth. It is against Moultrie. He's fouled out here with 5.47 to go. Moultrie, 10 points, 4 of 6 from the floor, 2 of 4 from three-point land. But those... That was really a clever play by Davis. He's taking the ball to the baseline. He feels the contact, and he gets the shot up. Yeah. So he gets to go to the line for two. And the Tar Heels, after starting so poorly from the free throw line, it's not like they're setting the world on fire, but they're 13 for 19. Davis knocks it down. Now a message from Works Landroid. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at mylandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. Davis hits them both. Substitution. Watley comes back in. Replacing Kabea, also Fennell back in to replace Maxwell. Justin, didn't North Carolina start the game shooting four for nine from the free throw line? That sounds right. And, yeah. so, and so now they're 15 for 21, which uh, I know I'm not a math guy, but that means they've made 11 of their last 12. And a traveling violation against Melvin. And then I think, that, you know, the, we talked early in the game about how the free throw shooting thing can get in your head sometimes, but with this North Carolina team, obviously they're not a great three-point shooting team, but they have that size. They've got guys who can drive the ball to the basket. This looks to me like a team that is going to shoot a lot of free throws this year. Mm -hmm. So it would really help them if they could make them, and make them and making them at a 71% rate, which is what they've done today, would certainly be acceptable. A blocking foul here against Melvin. That will be the team's seventh foul. So it'll be one and one right now for Caleb Love. The freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri, played for Justin Tatum in high school. Justin Tatum, the father of Jason Tatum, the phenomenal youngster who just signed a max contract with the Boston Celtics. Played at Christian Brothers College High School for Justin Tatum. As Caleb Love able to knock them both down at the free throw line. Sixty-three forty-seven coming up on five minutes to go. And a reach in foul here against the Tar Heels. And Justin, another thing, another adjustment I think that North Carolina has made early in the game, we saw a lot of plays like that where somebody out on the perimeter would get beaten and get, you know, they would get beat off the dribble and then all of a sudden uh, North Carolina Central is in the lane causing havoc. But I think the Tar Heels have done a much better job on the defensive end, moving their feet, keeping their men in front of them. That was the seventh team foul. The foul was against Davis. His second, so one and one here, as Melvin made the first. And Roy Williams isn't the only guy to do this, Justin, but when you get into this situation we talked about, you don't, don't have those four non-conference games that you'd normally have. You don't have the preseason scrimmage that you normally have. You don't have an exhibition game that you'd normally have. That is the time when coaches try to figure out who they have, what they have, how their pieces fit together. And not having that time, not having those games, and instead going in and playing. You look at North Carolina's schedule. They played Texas. Yeah. They played Iowa. They've got Ohio State coming up. So they haven't had any easy opportunities to just sort of fine-tune things. 
and you forgot they played the Maui Invitational in Asheville. So, I mean, no offense to Asheville, it's a great town, but it's not Maui. Well, it's not Maui, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that uh, that particularly helps you with your basketball. <laughs> Playing in Maui, it probably complicates things for the coach. But the point is that Roy Williams and all coaches, they have a routine, particularly somebody who's been at it as long as Roy has and has been as successful as Roy has. You have a way that you build your team. And even though North Carolina has had a tremendous tradition, they had a tough year last year, each team is brand new. Mm -hmm. And you have to build that team in a different way all the time. And so when you lose that six opportunities for team building, it can make it more difficult, particularly when six of your top ten rotation players are freshmen. One of them is a sophomore. One of them is a junior who's been injured a lot in his career. So Justin Watley able to put it in. The point is, it's not an easy thing to do, and guys like Roy Williams make it look easy. Roy Williams, the only coach in history with 400 wins at two different schools. We were talking about this before, but it's amazing to me that he has now been at North Carolina longer than he was at Kansas as the head coach. Yeah, you said that earlier, and that's just that's just hard to fathom. Yeah. Nice look-ahead pass, Fennell. Got to give a lot of credit to this North Carolina Central team. The game's not over with just under four minutes to go. They've hung around. They're down by 12. And if you knew what this team has been through just to get to this spot, you would be amazed. You almost wouldn't believe that it could actually be like that. Talking with Lavelle Moton yesterday, I mean, our jaws were dropping with everything he said. R.J. Davis. Davis able to knock down the jumper. Well, again, they are a low-resource basketball program. They don't have the resources that a North Carolina has or a Virginia has or a Gonzaga has or a Kansas has. And so it's a little bit different. They're guys, they came back from the summer, and due to COVID testing and stuff, there wasn't a lot they could do, so they did some conditioning rather than have, you know, full-scale practices. And in doing that conditioning, they had injuries, and it just it has been a mess from the start. They've hung around in this one. They trail 67-53 with 3.09 to go. Because together, we're stronger. See how we can help at SoCalGas.com slash RebatesTV. The Tar Heels leading North Carolina Central, 3.07 to go. Kaiser for three. He said it was short. He got the roll anyway. 17 points now for Kaiser, who averages over 22 a game. Now, how about that shot? He bounced off Caleb Love, was off balance, but was able to get the ball and knock it in anyway. He bounced around the rim a couple of times. That guy's a scorer. Davis. Gets the pick set by Sharp. Little floater. Sharp, the offensive rebound, and a foul is going to be called against Fennell. Trying to strip him on the way up. Well, that is now 11 offensive rebounds for the Tar Heels. Sharp at the free throw line. Entering today, 9 of 17 at the line on the season. And he makes the first. Don't forget, coming up next, more ACC basketball action as Pitt hosts Gardner-Webb at 4 p.m. Bob Rathbun and Brian Oliver on the call in the Steel City. Check your local listings. <laughs> Able to make them both. Leaky, Bl Leaky Black checks back in for Caleb Love. 13-point lead with 2.35 to go. The Tar Heels trying to move to 4-2 and two on the season. Good backcourt. Cut, there's Kaiser for the dunk. That's a couple times now they've been able to go backdoor against this Tar Heel defense. Right, and the guy who has given up the backdoor each time has been Leaky Black. 
That time, I think he was trying to deny the pass out on the wing, and he just didn't have any help behind him. Black doesn't want the three. The lob, and we're going to have a hold here against Fennell. Well, this is a situation where you just get the back door, and, you know, that. that Everybody for North Carolina is up above the free throw line. There's nobody back there to help. So that's a good play design by North Carolina Central. Walker Kessler makes the free throw. The foul was against Fennell, his fourth. Gets the roll. So who? This claim that you made that North Carolina was having a tough time shooting free throws, Justin, I'm, <laughs> I'm beginning to question it. Now, Before, Dave, when you said that, you know, it could get into your head when you're shooting poorly, it could also get into your head when you're shooting them well. Absolutely. And it confidence. Fennell, this is going to be out of bounds. Good hands by him, knocking it away, and it's out of bounds off of R.J. Davis. If you're Kessler, you want to keep that ball high. He mm -hmm. brought it down and... And you'd also like to see him have his hands be a little bit stronger than that. You don't want one of those little guys knocking it out of your hands. And if they take it away from him when you're dribbling, well, that's just something that happens. But you shouldn't allow him to knock it out of your hands. Melvin kick back. Watley top of the key three. And a good rebound by Sharp went up high. <laughs> I don't think good rebound is really an adequate enough description. That was some kind of play by Sharp. And this Sharp... I mean, good heavens, he's, watch him run to the lane and just go straight up in the air. Now, you'd like to block him out, but then again, you know, maybe discretion is the better part of valor mm -hmm. getting in the way of this guy. Again, 265 pounds as a freshman. He had a double-double in his debut against the College of Charleston, 13 points and 10 rebounds. He had 13 and 6 against Iowa on Tuesday. In their third game of the season... He led the team in assists. And in North Carolina's storied basketball history, they've never had a freshman big man lead the team in assists in his third game. <laughs> and you think about the history of big men at Carolina, there have been some great ones. To do that, to be the first one, that the first early? freshman big man right. in his third game. So there's a lot of qualifiers of in course, there. Of course, yeah. Timeout here on the floor. But you mentioned Sharp coming into the game with 9 for 17, shooting 53% from the free throw line. He's 4 for 4 today. Kessler, who came into the game shooting 27% from the free throw line, coming in 3 out of 11. He's 3 for 3 today. And the North Carolina Tar Heels, 64% free throw shooting team, well, they've shot 80% today. And again, this is the way I think they're going to have to play. They're going to go to the free throw line a lot because they've got those big guys they're going to try to throw it inside. they got the guards who can drive. And so, again, when you get to the free throw line and you convert, that's what you want to do. And I, we mentioned in the first half against uh, Texas, they got to the free throw line, but they couldn't convert. And Texas was converting jump shots on the offensive end. And that's not the formula you want. The formula you want is what you've seen today. Yeah, I think you're going to see free throws. Second chance points will be huge for North Carolina all season long. Don't forget, coming up next, Gardner-Webb against Pitt. Check your local listings. Justin Kutcher and Dan Bonner here in Chapel Hill. Look at that block. Oh, and a late whistle. Uh, as the foul will be called against Walker Kessler, thought he had a clean block against Watley. Uh, it started out as a clean block, but on the follow-through, he really did hit him pretty hard. And going back to your point before about the games that North Carolina has missed out on and, and all the teams have missed out on, but when you have so many young players, you talked about Roy Williams trying to figure out really a rotation. Who works? Who works well with, with who? And because you have so many new players coming in, that's when you can use the preseason, the exhibitions, the tournaments to help you figure that out before conference play. Well, Justin, think about this. Who are two of the marquee programs that are struggling a little bit? Well, Kentucky, for one, and then everybody's making a big deal about the fact that Duke has lost a couple of home games. Well, these are teams with almost an entirely new team. Mm -hmm. 
you know, th these programs, they're, you know, they featured the one-and-done guys, the, the high-recruited All-American types, and so they basically have a total roster turnover every year. Well, these are exactly the kind of teams that are hurt by the fact that they don't have the normal preseason that they've always had. No doubt about it. Foul <laughs> against North Carolina. And, 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 <laughs> Roy, Roy, come on, you're ahead by 14 points. <laughs> <laughs> but he sees that he doesn't want to put him on the free throw line. But the, the reverse side of that is you take a team that both of these, uh, these schools have competed against, University of Iowa. Iowa is a veteran group. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, Iowa's got seven guys in their rotation who've started a total of 365 games in their career. So you have veteran guys, and it's, it's not easier necessarily. Uh, it's not easy, let me say that, but it's easier for those guys to adjust in a situation where you don't have as many tune-ups as you normally would. And we mentioned how North Carolina is a second-half team so far in the first five games of this season, this being the sixth. Well, in the second half, they have outscored North Carolina Central by 10 points right around their average. Here's Fennell for three. Uh, they, they've gotten sloppy here in the last couple of minutes. Uh, they've turned the ball over. And, boy, you just got to tip your hat to North Carolina Central. They have not quit. And it will be an over-and-back violation here by North Carolina. By, by North Carolina. And again, give a ton of credit to Lavelle Moten. He, he said it feels like they're playing, you know, pickup basketball. Like, I got next in the park. Hey, can you play with me? Can you play with me? They have not practiced as an entire team yet this season. And yet here they are coming in to the Smith Center and putting up a fight against North Carolina. I think it's it's remarkable what they've been able to well, do. Keep in mind that this is an outstanding program. They've mm -hmm. won the MEAC tournament three years in a row. There are four years in a row of the MEAC regular season champions. Watley hits the three. Now, how about this? 73-67 <laughs> with 14.6 seconds to go. But you got a foul you got now. got a foul, yeah. Too much time has come off the clock and a timeout taken by Brooks. And that's what Lavelle Moten is telling us, guys. Guys, if we don't steal the ball immediately, you got a foul. But talking about his team, he said how, how excited these guys are just to practice. I mean, the fact, he said, I, I haven't seen guys so excited to practice his entire career, this being his 12th year. Again, don't forget, coming up next, Gardner-Webb against Pitt. Check your local listings for that one. But 8.3 seconds to go here. North Carolina Central on a 9 nothing run. But this is the kind of game that if you're a player for North Carolina, you're just going to shake your head because even though you've won the game and even though you've had some very good stretches in the game, you didn't finish it very well, so your coaches are going to be really mad at you and they can make your life miserable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. Again, don't necessarily want to go to practice. <laughs> you know, they may not be as excited as practice about practicing tomorrow or whenever they practice the next time as North Carolina Central. Lakey Black in to inbound to Love. That's a nice job to just keep the ball moving. Yep. Play Tech will be able to dribble this one out, and North Carolina will win this game. 73 to 67. North Carolina Central really put up a great effort. Coming up next, Pitt against Gardner Webb, Bob Rathbun, and Brian Oliver with the call. For Dan Bonner and the rest of our crew, I am Justin Kutcher saying so long from Chapel Hill. Kutcher saying so long from Chapel Hill. I know this all looks very Hollywood, but guess what? This is a Nissan sales event ad. Sales event ads are usually born. Should old acquaintance be forgotten, never brought